Thank you for listening to this podcast from TRE. Talk Radio Europe, your voice in Spain and around the world. For more information, please visit tre.radio. TRE in the afternoon. Presented by Hannah Murray. Good afternoon. You are listening to Women Talk with me in the studio today, Nina Ulinampa, Teresa Gonzalez and Eileen Ordas. Hello. 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 Hi. Hi. Thank you all for coming in. If you're listening at home and you'd like to get involved, you absolutely can. You can send me an email, studio at tre.radio, or you can send a WhatsApp to plus three four six four five ninety nine sixty seven ninety five. There's a, an article here with a lovely picture of Kylie Minogue and the headline reads, It's a vintage year for Kylie as she racks up £30 million in wine sales on her 56th birthday. So uh, it got me thinking about celebrities who kind of put their names to products and things like this because obviously Kylie hasn't crushed the grapes with her own feet or hands or had anything much to do with the wine-making process, but she's done extremely extremely well uh, out of this and other celebrities have uh, also put their names to wineries and things or or any products like this in in general i don't just mean advertising i mean you know at, at their actual name buying a bottle of wine with kylie on the label i wondered if that sort of thing would would influence you if you if you would you know if you're whether you're a fan of kylie or not or another celebrity that you can think of that you would look at it and potentially buy it just because it's associated with a certain celebrity or not not the celebrity but i think the fact that there is a celebrity brings the product to your attention doesn't it yeah there might be a type of wine that kylie promotes that is different from something you might buy. So because Kylie has put her name to it, you find out about that product. Yeah. Lots of things. I don't think it's... Um, I don't know whether I would definitely buy Kylie's £9 no. bottle of uh, bubbly, <laughs> but um, but because she might be doing something different, mm. then you might, mightn't you? Yeah. I'm not I mean, going I... to lie on the beach and think, oh, I'll drink this because I look like Kylie. No, <laughs> I know what you mean. But I, I mean, I must have, I, I love Kylie. Like, I really, yeah. really love Kylie. So, uh, I mean, if she was, if she'd put her name to a product that I don't, that I knew I wouldn't like, I wouldn't buy it because it's got her name on it. But if it's a, it's, it's a kind of, it's a rosé Cote de Provence kind of sparkling wine, which sounds absolutely delicious. So if it didn't have her name on it, I'd be inclined to go, oh, that looks nice. So the fact that it does, unless it was really expensive, which I don't believe it is, um, I, I'll admit I, I would be likely to go, oh, I'll give that a try, see what it's like. I wouldn't buy like a whole case. I'd buy one to see if I liked it first. And if I did, then yeah, I'd buy it again. That's exactly what she's trying to do, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> so the good thing is you do like her, so you would probably think about that. Now, there are people who might not like Kylie. Mm. So it might have the opposite effect. Absolutely. Yeah. But certainly people who, well, influencers and people of different generations now are, are falling for that publicity. Yeah. Um, but it might not be a good quality, but they might just be following that personality or that uh, yeah. famous person that for them is enough to influence them to buy it. Definitely. That's what influencing is, isn't yeah. it? That's what it's all about. I totally get why it would why it would work because who doesn't like Kylie oh dear oh dear <laughs> and it's interesting it's not only like when you think about broad view like there's a lot of celebrities that are going into that like alcohol mm. and sparkles like Jennifer Lopez yeah. she has her own brand and tequila think, yeah, and yeah, lots of yeah, people yeah. yeah and there's there's a difference so I think it brings awareness I like Jennifer Lopez. I think I think she's an amazing. For example, when you said like Kylie as well, I like her. Yeah, I probably like more Jennifer Lopez, but I probably I'm not I, I'm not aware that she's promoting her drink as well or her brand. And I think it brings awareness. Otherwise, I probably would have not known. Like yeah. you said, I would not known. And then it's okay. It's interesting. Maybe I'd try, but uh, yeah. Kind of depends. Yeah. You, so you wouldn't be put off if a celebrity no. is associated no. with something. No. no. 
unless it's a celebrity we don't like. And <laughs> otherwise, you might you might just not know about that. Yeah, Cote yeah, de exactly. Provence. Yeah, exactly. Sparkling wine, might you? It's mm. Because it is, which is why they pay her to do it. Yeah, for. yeah. It makes perfect. I think it's. I mean, it's a great advertising yeah. idea. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So, food. I always like talking about food, and uh, this one is uh, all to do with tasting menus and Heston Blumenthal. Uh, who charges quite a lot of money at his uh, very posh restaurant. Mm -hmm. And this one is uh, a kind of topsy-turvy menu which costs £325 when going for dinner. Only £275 if you have it at lunchtime, though. Um, (laughs) And basically... Bargain. Yes, exactly. Uh, It starts with dessert... And ends with a starter. But his dessert, it, well, it's sweets. It starts with a bag of sweets, and they're no ordinary bags of sweets. Uh, then customers tuck into the famous English breakfast ice cream, <laughs> served with caramelised brioche, followed by a take on Black Forest Gatto, then beef, fish and veg. The drinks list is also reversed. You start with an espresso martini, <laughs> then have tea, red wine, and finally an aperitif. And uh, the the journalist who who, who went along uh, said that actually somehow it really works and it's really nice. So I want to know whether you'd be tempted to try something like that, whether if money was no object, it wouldn't bother you paying that kind of money, or whether you think it all sounds absolutely ludicrous. Well, I think variety is the spice of life, as they say. Mm. Um, and the starting the wrong way is what, what we're not used to, I think is probably a bit um, confusing. Yeah. So I think mentally it's probably <laughs> could be a good thing or a bad thing. Yeah. Um, it might be a good thing uh, because it's something you're not used to. Um, but I'm not sure what that does inside you. <laughs> no. Sure your digestion is, is really going to enjoy That's that. That's true. Um, but, but why would it be shaken up? Up, you know, because you, once you've eaten everything, it's all Goes in the, the stomach. It's all jumbled <laughs> together. You might as well have you. Yeah. You start <laughs> with yeah. your ice cream. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> the, the problem that I would have is that I usually cannot go like it's a lot. I usually do not have the dessert like you have if you have exactly. a t- yeah. starter and a main the amount of or then a main and a dessert. So yeah. the whole thing, I'm not sure if I could go through it, but it sounds. Odd. I would give it a go, but I'm not sure if I, just to start start with the sweet stuff and then going into. It but sounds, the thing is, I mean, I don't you know. know if you saw that, but they have snail porridge. You know, I'm not oh, sure about that. Yeah, that yeah, does that great, start does with or to end? I don't yeah, know. I don't know. Uh, I mean, the, the, the portions will yeah. be very small. Yeah. They're not going to be like full size yeah. courses. They're, they're, they're just a little taster. Yeah. But I, you I, don't go to a tasting menu to have your appetite satisfied, do you? It's not like cooking yeah. shepherd's pie at home and you, no, and you don't exactly. eat anything else. You're going to have, you're going to a experiment. A experience. Yeah. Yes. yes. So actually, if that's what the chef wants to present to you yeah. in small portions and you try them all good for him yeah. you know, and if he can get that money for it well yeah. why not well, he's making um, millions yeah. I saw yeah. the profit on that so something's yeah. working yeah. And, but fancy did you read that it's the thinnest jam tart yes and the, yeah. the thickness of a a so, playing card. It, so it says here, a, a hand-painted playing card containing the world's thinnest jam tart, so intricate it took three years to perfect and 46 oh. hours to make. See, you wouldn't expect to pay nine ninety nine on a meal deal for that, <laughs> would you? Really? I mean, seriously, yeah. that's, I mean, that's you proper do, work. You do gone. say, well, why, don't you? <laughs> Could he yes. not have solved all the world problems? Yeah. <laughs> yes. I, lo- I love it. I'm a total sucker for this kind of thing if i if i had yeah a bit more money in the bank i'd 100 percent book in to do this without question i'd, I'd love I'd, i mean it's actually something on my bucket list to go to his restaurant yeah. specifically heston blumenthal because he's got a chemistry degree i think an, oh, no, an honorary fellowship from the royal society of chemistry because he does all kinds of amazing mm. things with with food and and i just think that's wonderful because it is a it's a dining experience it's so much more than going for a slap up meal it's mm. it's almost i don't want to say it's not about the food of course it is but it's so much more it's about the presentation it's about the look the smell uh, mm. everything and to have tastes Theater. that you have yeah. never experienced. Yeah. If you're going to pay that 
that money you're paying for that. But on this this chemistry thing, years ago I, I heard him interviewed and he was questioning why green beans should be put into boiling water. Right. Because the minute you put the beans in, it's no longer boiling. And <laughs> and he's a questioning type, isn't he? He's obviously yes. questioning yeah. everything. Um, I never learned the answer to that as to why we <laughs> put beans into boiling water. But that was one of his questions, mm. because immediately it is no longer boiling. So is it the shock to the beans that keeps them green? Or, you know? yeah. But that's the type of man he is. But also that article says that he's bipolar, so yeah, he's obviously capable of... Mm extreme concentration on very yeah. small And thinking outside items. the box, I think. That's what yeah. it is. It's not the conventional yeah. way. Well, the idea of having a, an English breakfast, bre- English breakfast ice cream, I mean, uh, sounds horrible, doesn't it? Let's be honest. It doesn't sound appealing. I could but fancy I'd bacon, to... though. Bacon ice cream, I could well, exactly. see. But with, with egg ice cream, I don't Oh, know. no. <laughs> exactly. But I'd love to try it just yeah. because. Well, lickable chocolate wallpaper. Yeah, I mean, who doesn't want lickable <laughs> chocolate wallpaper in everyday life? Yeah, but you, you can keep the smell porridge, though. <laughs> yes, no, very well. But do you need a decorator to come to do it every day? <laughs> yes, absolutely. That would be good. Um, OK, sticking with the, the dining out subject... This is uh, Gordon Ramsay's restaurant, one of the most exclusive restaurants in London, so you might have assumed that patrons would make an effort to look presentable. But restaurant Gordon Ramsay, the three Michelin star flagship venue of the TV chef, has been forced to tell diners to smarten up. On its website, the Chelsea establishment says that while they can express their own individual style, we do ask guests to avoid shorts, tracksuits and hoodies. I yeah. mean, would people really go to a yeah, restaurant like this. that in a I get this, Hannah. Yeah, I, I grew up in London. I'm from London. Yeah. And I've been living here on the coast for 20 years. And I've gone back and there's just seemed to have been a complete change of... Really? Oh, oh, absolutely. Of style, of the way want, people want to come across. It's very informal, especially London. Um, it's very liberal-minded. And it seems to be that people are actually dressing down. It's It's just... A way of, I don't know, um, maybe middle class guilt. I'm not sure what it is, but it is definitely hoodies, trainers, jeans. That's you know, that's basically a staple diet for anywhere, anywhere you go. Wow! So it is a London lifestyle. Yeah, I mean, I remember people saying a long time ago that you can tell people who have serious kind of old money wealth because they don't make an effort when they go out. (laughs) It's people with a lot of money that are like, right, need to put my best jewellery on, nice pair of shoes and a matching handbag and, you know, make a real effort and you spot the guy in the hoodie and the the ripped jeans and the dirty shoes. Oh, he's he's come from money. (laughs) It's funny. Yeah, so these people who've got new money have read that and they're now going in the hood. So that's what old money does. I'm wearing a hoodie. I mean, so what? Why? It doesn't actually say why the restaurant felt it necessary. Well, this is to another thing I want the client. Why? Well, th- this is another thing that I wanted to say. Do do you feel offended as a patron? Do you think it matters if you've gone out to dinner somewhere nice, particularly, and you've made an effort, and you, you know it's a special occasion, you're going to a nice mm-hmm. restaurant. If you saw people that were dressed with you know scruffy shoes, jeans, whatever. Would you would you comment to your partner, not necessarily to them? You know, would you say, "God, look, well, look at what they're wearing." Uh, I probably it wouldn't bother me because I think today everything's kind of it's also shows something about our culture at the moment because you look at celebrities or pop stars or music stars; they're very casual. Everything's mm. very casual. And they might have branded hoodies or whatever, but or something like expensive brands, but they're very casual. And I think that brings into, like you said, like you can be really be the billionaire and you're dressing down and you're going into a restaurant. Personally, it wouldn't bother me. Mm. I think if it was a special event where there's a dress code and yeah. somebody walks in with whatever, then probably, yes, it will be appropriate to address it. That's mm. my opinion. But uh, anything, it wouldn't bother me. Dress uh, codes yeah, definitely. Yeah, but dress code, relaxed. if it's if yeah. it's advised or if it's uh, yeah. something then, and if you break that, then it's probably like, you know, I think it would be appropriate to address that. But yeah. But don't you think bother. that's a bit of a generational thing as well? I mean, I've, I've 
been that person who's dressed up. When I was a young person, you used to wear your... Well, in those days, I would wear a, a long flowery mm. dress to go to the theatre, mm. and you dressed up to go to the mm. theatre. Nobody does that now, and <laughs> and I don't actually care. And mm. what I would care about in the restaurant is... Um, is the snail meringue up to the snuff of Herman <laughs> Blumenthal? You know what's on the pl- what's on the plate? Yeah, because I'm yeah. not. I might say to my husband, "Oh my God, look mm. at that!" But I might equally say that about a, a celebrity woman mm. who was wearing virtually nothing. Mm. Yes. I'm much, yes, up to the yeah. much more worried about what might fall into my plate of food than if somebody's wearing a hoodie. Yeah. yeah. I think it, there's something very nice about making an effort. And yeah. I think it, it's a question of occasion as well. Mm. But dress code is definitely relaxed in that, in that way. And as mm. you say, it, it's uh, a lot more casual now. Yeah. But yeah. That's, that's also the thing that now I feel you can wear anything. When I was a youngster, you dressed up to go to those places and then people didn't do it so much. But mm. people used to wear suits in the office and they don't do that anymore. Mm. Yeah, um, that's true, yeah. And, yeah, and I'm not offended about what anybody does when the, it's some people like to dress up to go to a restaurant. Well, good, go and do it and enjoy it. Yeah. But mm. if the food's good, it doesn't matter if the person who's sitting at the next table is wearing... A hoodie, possibly. The hoodie cost a lot, as you said, designer yeah. hoodie could yes. have yeah. cost an awful lot more. than. <laughs> but I'm interested as to why the, the restaurant feel that they want to... Well, it's a standard, people, isn't yeah. it, in inverted commas? You know, it's people who are dining here uh, can afford to dine here and they look after themselves yeah. and the way they dress reflects that. It's the whole image of the place, I guess. And if you've got someone wearing a hoodie, it, it, I guess it would be deemed that they kind of look out of place. You know, people mm, yeah. might think, what, 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 why are they dressed like that? Can they really afford to eat here? You know, people yeah. would judge, mm. sadly. But it might be a boy band and they've all decided to yeah. go out. Yeah, to yeah absolutely. Gordon, they've heard about Gordon Ramsay and they've got the money and they'll yeah. Yeah. educate their tastes. Yes. <laughs> Heaven forbid. <laughs> um, right, there's uh, one more to do with food and it's to do with pre-mashed potato. Sales have soared as shoppers try to save time. So uh, if you can if you can bear to uh, be honest about this, or if you don't want to, you can say, my friend said. Um, <laughs> have you ever, would you ever buy anything like ready mashed potato, or if not, any other kind of things that you can think of, pre-cut vegetables, all that kind of thing? Have you done it? Do you do it for save t- to save time? Don't really care, not a big deal. Or would you absolutely never do anything like that on principle? <clears throat> I try to avoid it sometimes it's it depends on the situation you know it happened to me before i uh, if i travel somewhere and i have to go to the gro- i go for example go to visit my dad and i go to the grocery store there might be certain things at that point that are open i do grab what i need to take mm-hmm. but in principle i try to use the vegetables not from like a, from a package or yeah frozen or whatever but sometimes life happens and you just need to get the meal yeah exactly so it depends it's good to have it i would rather have it fresh whenever possible so Mm. that's me Mm -hmm. i think uh, we are all aware of and very conscious of the fact that processed foods are not good for us so as as fresh as it can get i think is really what we need to aim for Mm. but um it's been years since i've had mashed potato from a packet yeah. I mean maybe I don't know 20 30 years it was very popular uh, a long time ago but I did read that article and I saw that it, a packet costs 90p whereas if you put together the potatoes and the butter and the salt and everything else it's going to cost up I think three times the price mm. so unfortunately though people's diets have um, deteriorated and uh, and, and um, if you're not fully educated on what is good for you, um, you're going to see it as as a benefit because it's cheaper. Yeah, cheaper, easier, quicker. Exactly. So I think I think we have to have a balanced diet, and we need to think about eating as much fresh fruit yeah. and food as possible, um, and making time. Mm. Maybe boil the potatoes, let let them <laughs> let them cool yeah, down, and make exactly. them later on or whatever. I'm not aware of ever having bought. Um, pre-mashed potato or that smash which was just powder thing I I think I had that once round round a friend's house when I was at school and I noted you know it kind of tastes 
powdery, didn't it? It didn't have, it didn't taste like natural potato. You could tell straight away that it had come out of the packet. It's just not as good. It's all down to quality again, and that mashed potato depends on the quality. And I used to do catering for rugby teas. Yeah. And we did Mm -hmm. cottage pie, and we used smash but the secret is to put enough liquid in plenty of butter with it yeah and leave it long enough to absorb the water and and reconstitute Mm -hmm. it it was acceptable (laughs) but I, i you know i'm a retired person i have time to boil the potatoes and or or actually do it in my super duper kitchen machine <laughs> which makes the best mashed potato imaginable yeah. but i have the time to do it and that is a luxury mm. isn't it and that is not an ultra processed food compared with some um, is it yeah. if it really is potatoes if it's nothing else mm. yeah, well, cooked and with butter an and option. milk then I, I don't see anything wrong with that mm. that's yeah. not ultra processed but then when I read Hester Blumenthal, I thought, well, talk about ultra-processed food. How how more processed can you get than a, a wafer-thin jam tart that's got <laughs> hand painting on it? Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> OK, we better take a break there. Hannah Murray on TRE in the afternoon. Good afternoon. You're listening to Women Talk with me in the studio today, Nina Ulenampa, Teresa Gonzalez and Eileen Ordas. And there's an article here about going to the hairdresser. The headline reads, Why My Dream Hairdresser's One Who Shuts Up. And uh, she talks about the excruciating agony of having to make small talk with the stylist, an agony that can last more than three hours if you're having a full head of colour, cut and a blow dry. She says, while well, some people are happy to natter away to the person doing their hair, there are many others who find it tedious, awkward and even stressful. Congratulations to a Finnish hairdresser who has started offering a silent appointment service in Helsinki. She has come to realise that many of her clients view their salon as a place of sanctuary, somewhere to escape the stresses of everyday life. I think this is interesting. So how do you feel when you go and get a treatment done, whether it's hair or, or something similar, massage or facial? What, do you want your therapist to be chatting away or do you want silent or whatever? How do you feel? I absolutely... When I saw that article, I started smiling because it's probably a little bit a cultural thing as well. I do believe so. I'm from Finland and when I read that article, it's... You know, being silent is okay, but in a certain, you might feel it awkward in certain cultures Mm -hmm. because if you don't say anything, it's like, oh, what's going on here? Is everything okay? Is everything okay and everything? (laughs) For me, like it's, uh, I'm a talkative person, although I find it much more comforting when I go in and I have a little bit of a chit chat. If that wasn't there, it would be awkward for me, but that's just a personal outside of my culture Mm. because I'm from Finland. And it's slightly different then, but when you you live and life happens and stuff like that. But it's quite interesting. I think nobody should be offended if they want to be. And I think whoever is in that position treating their customer will take the the, the vibe. And if they want to talk or not. Yeah, talk. exactly. But I, I can so. relate. You know, we all have our days that we don't. We just want to sit down, yeah. relax. Somebody do my hair. Oh, I can just sit here and have a cup of coffee or whatever so there yeah. and, you know and it's lovely but i wouldn't i wouldn't self be offended at all if somebody takes their moment because mm. you know you never know what happens so i think hairdressers um you do tend to spend a long time there um and uh you might find that you do enter in some sort of conversation it might be interesting but generally personally i prefer to just have a quiet moment to myself yeah um uh but yeah, as you say i think it could get awkward if it's totally silent <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's just yeah. like well you know what do you get where are you going on your holidays at least or something is <laughs> quite nice um but as you know i've diversified recently and i've taken on a, a nail salon and it's absolutely amazing because our treatments are half an hour 
really maximum maybe you might get in hours but in that half an hour it's incredible how everybody wants to talk <laughs> telling you that <laughs> life story <laughs> <laughs> and because it's international it's amazing I mean mm. I literally it's fascinating I mean I have to say all women I mean, men are welcome but it is all women yeah and it's just wonderful to hear that and they seem to want to and I and I think it is a cultural thing mm. yeah uh, because maybe 80 percent of our um, clients are Spanish and it's a very Spanish thing. You get mm. into conversation, you can mm. sit on a bus, you can be waiting down a road somewhere in a queue somewhere, and you just strike up a conversation. Yeah. Um, but we know when the Finnish people come in. Yes. <laughs> and the Swedish yes. and the Norwegian. And, 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 it's but very d- different. It yeah. is very different, and that's what I meant by... For me, it's not a. Pro- it's for me, it wouldn't be awkward. I just mm. personally, I yeah, it is a personal yeah, thing. It's a, it's a very really personal, yeah. personal mood you're in as yeah. well. And I think yeah. it also depends how long have you known that hairdresser. Yeah. I mean, I've been going to the same hairdresser for nine or ten years now, and sometimes we chatter away like mad, and other times we don't because I, mm. I think. Sometimes he needs to concentrate, and I would like him to concentrate when he's doing <laughs> yeah. my hair. But if I think the first time you go into a salon, you you would expect the therapist, beautician, hairdresser to make some effort at conversation, and then of course you you get the opportunity mm. to find for them to identify whether mm. what the vibe is, whether you want to talk Exactly. To. I think but it's the foot- totally down to the therapist to read the room. Mm. Yeah. Because I've definitely been in situations where I've really just w- wanted to be, not necessarily with a hairdresser, but whether I've, you know, really wanted to be quiet and the, and the, and the therapist is non-stop mm. talking. Oh, we, we, mm. did, we did this and we did that, you know, telling you loads of information about them. Mm. And I kind of think if if the therapist kind of leave, what well, did they don't have to leave? But if they're if they're asking questions to the client, you know, oh, so what what are you doing and where do you work and what do you do? And, uh, if the client's responding in a really chatty manner, then they obviously want to chat, and then it's fine, and and you can have a kind of natural chat. But yeah. if the client's going, oh yeah, and, and giving like really yeah. short answers, then get the get the vibe yeah. and mm. stop talking. Exactly. <laughs> I think also, Just, you yeah, go, yeah. yeah, you yeah. go to be pampered. Yeah, and a lot of the time that doesn't include conversation. No, um, mm. I, I went and had a facial a week ago, and I just don't want to go back there because she just didn't stop talking yes. to me. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> every other well, there was a question, and when I couldn't really speak because she was, you know, had all the yeah, creams yeah, yeah. all over her face. When the dentist yeah. talks you know, just, to you, <laughs> and then I thought I'd be quiet, and then she started selling me all the different services that they had oh. and a special offer that has just come out today. And why don't you think about this? And why do I just thought, I can't go back? There. No, I just thought it was exhausting. Yeah. <laughs> But on the other hand, the therapist, you know, perhaps not the therapist, but the business person might have preferred you to say, look, I've just had a stressful day. Can we just do this quietly? I feel really rude. I yeah, feel really rude too. saying well, that. No, well, you I shouldn't. Would. I think you should but read, you voted, the, read, read the room. Yeah. yeah. You voted with your feet, though, haven't you? Yeah. If, if, she were, if that therapist were better. Uh, but as I say, my hairdresser... Um, he really annoys him when he's doing somebody's hair and he can't actually reach the hair because they've, they've got the mobile phone oh, yeah, on the end and, and they're talking. And, yeah. Uh, so it, it cuts both ways, I think. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah so, but it is the hairdresser who's trying to sell you something, isn't it? Which is an experience, a haircut, yeah. a, a treatment. But if you think about the treatments cleverer. that there are now, I mean, some mm. of them, like us, if you're hi- getting your hair highlighted or that, or the keratin or something, it could be hours and yeah, hours absolutely. there. Absolutely, yeah. a long yeah. time. There used to be magazines and hairdressers. Yeah, uh, so but you people, don't get you them just so know, much now. So you end up on your phone if they sort yeah. of walk off anyway. So. Mm. I just think it, it really should be really kind of obvious for the therapist to kind of read the room if the client is, is full on chatting and, and asking the therapist loads of questions and obviously wants a chat, then I think the therapist being the one providing a service, that should kind of be included if that's what the client yeah. wants. Mm. But if the client's just happily on their phone, the therapist shouldn't be constantly yeah. like trying to talk to them whilst <laughs> yeah. they're happily reading a book or yeah. on their phone or, or doing or whatever. Or vice versa, totally. yeah. Or yeah, vice versa. Totally. I mean, sometimes they can just be talking non-stop, actually. Uh, I saw a meme recently which was, do you want it with therapy or without? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and it was just this, putting this tape across her mouth. You know, it's like, oh, without, OK. Yeah, because yeah, well, a lot of the therapists do, do feel like therapists in that kind of sense, don't they? Because you do, some people do, like, just tell their whole life story in that mm-hmm. situation. Right, we better take another break. 
Hannah Murray. TRE in the afternoon. Good afternoon. You're listening to Women Talk with me in the studio today. We have Nina Ulanampa, Teresa Gonzalez, and Eileen Ordas. Loaded magazine. Um, <laughs> it is coming back, apparently. Uh, it hasn't been on the shelves for nine years. So, Loaded magazine, FHM magazine, all big kind of lads' mags that were around uh, in the 90s. Uh, articles, on, you know, very kind of typical generalistic articles on cars and aftershaves and pictures of pretty women in bikinis and that kind of thing. Um, so, Jenny Murray, the journalist, has said the return of Loaded undermines everything we fought for. She says, Loaded magazine is to return to reassure men that they can ogle beautiful women. After a nine-year hiatus, the rebranded Loaded World will return with the stated aim of recreating the nostalgic feel of the title which folded in 2015 as competition from the internet and changing tastes surrounding the death knell for the so-called lads mags. She said that boys need to learn that they should have respect for women. They need to understand the feelings and fears of women and girls at a time when violence against us is in the news every day. They need to know that ogling near-naked women relegates them to mere objects. No matter how beautiful the women are, they're still presented as pieces of meat. What do we think about lads, Max? (laughs) <laughs> I'll start. I think, <laughs> I, I think I think it's a bit much what she's saying. To be honest, I think they're pretty harmless. I think she's making out that they're really, really bad and offensive to women. And I think compared to the kind of content that can be accessed online free I th- for free, yeah, I think uh, these magazines are pretty tame in comparison. Mm, I but agree with you. Opinion. I think that ship has sailed, hasn't it? Absolutely. The, um, yeah. What people, in, in general, magazines are not as popular as they were. Newspapers, uh, printed newspapers don't sell so much. People, everybody's doing everything on a screen, mm. aren't they? And to think that you could object to Loaded being relaunched and think that's going to make any difference, I mm. think... But she's making a point. She's she has been a lifelong feminist, yes, Jenny Murray, <laughs> and I suppose it it does bear repeating that young men now, if you uh, believe what you read, are slipping backwards in treatment of of women, mm-hmm. and and that's a retrograde step. And so she's she's writing that to to bring that subject to the fore, isn't she? Yeah. Which is still needs doing. Yeah. The, the fact is that whatever in that those magazines that are relaunched, like there is nothing that hasn't been launched online already. Mm. And we're only opening Instagram or any social media. It's full of it. Yeah. So to say that what are they like, uh, how popular that magazine will be is another question as well. Who's going to go into printed media or is it going to be available online? Don't know. But I think it's really a bit from I think it's already out there yeah it's nothing it new in, it's nothing new and in, whether that's going to be changing anything or at the end of the day it comes from education and how you educate your children Absolutely. and how we how we how we make the, like I got a son and I do believe that if there's a lads magazine available there won't I think the bigger impact is about the the educating our children how are you viewing and and discussing about these matters how do you treat men women equally whoever Mm. and whether a printed magazine that is available now to buy is going to have an impact on that yeah i'm I'm not quite sure if that's gonna make a huge of a difference i think i think it's i think it's silly to kind of say oh men looking at women as as objects is is wrong because i mean come on it's 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 human nature, isn't it? Especially for young guys, you know, yeah. growing up, learning about themselves, learning yeah. about them, their bodies and whatever. It's it's all part of growing up, isn't it? It certainly is. And I think, as you say, it's what you receive in a form of education. Yeah. And uh, how you're brought up. Yeah. Um, and it is true. Um, there are differences between men and women, as we well know. Mm. Women are from Venus. <laughs> um, and uh, it, it is it's certainly a, a point that if it closed in 2015 we might have come somewhere along the line and realised that actually it is accessible anywhere mm. right now so mm. 
one other printed media doesn't make a much much of a difference really no no i agree uh this is uh, an interesting one dresses low cut dresses showing uh, a lot of a lot of boob a lot of cleavage uh this was written by a woman as well she says i'm not convinced about the trend for navel grazing necklines for anyone flat chested like emma stone they look rather odd and for those with a fuller bust like eva longoria because she's pictured here it's all a bit well in your face i in neither case particularly flattering or sexy so i thought it'd be interesting to ask the women about this because you know how 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 do we feel about it when you see a, a woman in a in a dress or, or a top or whatever that's really low cut so you can see her chest whether she's got a full bust or not do you think it can look nice sexy classy what do you think and does it make a difference on the size of the breasts shall we say <laughs> well i bet it does <laughs> yeah i think we're going back a bit to anything goes now mm. oh. Personally, I um, it's one of my things. Well, we're used to a cleavage, aren't we? Yeah. We've seen cleavages since Diana Dawes, and that was in the 60s. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, we saw cleavages before that. But in the past 10 years, probably, I have noticed very deep V. Mm. And personally, I, I think that that is not as attractive as having a slightly... Uh, less revealing because that yeah. that part of the female body below you know in the middle below the breasts hasn't really got much going for oh, I don't think it has anything going you won't <laughs> see mine out in public anyway <laughs> <laughs> and the other the other feature I've noticed is that the sort of upside down cleavage have you noticed that Everybody on Love Island has a bikini yes, that and they covers turn it the, the top, other way. and the bottom is exposed. Yes, yes. But that's just mm. another fashion, isn't it? Yeah, and, yeah. Covering and the nipples and showing under boob. Under boob. Yes, that's that's fashionable. Yeah, but they're I, not real. I tried, I tried it at home just for a laugh. <laughs> I, was, I was absolutely <laughs> creasing, not a good look. laughing, going not in a million years <laughs> when I leave the house like this. And I just and it's bizarre because these these things that you see on television, and I just thought if I went out like this. People go, Hannah, what the hell are you wearing? So, I think we're back to yeah. fashion victims, aren't we? It's yeah. what it is. Yeah, and you yeah. see, but where is that woman wearing that? She's on the catwalk. She doesn't want to be wearing something that is not talked about. Just, you know, yeah. the, the whole point of being on the red carpet is that you, your photo's in the paper yeah. the following day or the following week, isn't it? Yeah. And, and that's not going to happen if you have a, mm. you know, a moderately high neckline and... It's just not no, going to happen. Exactly. So they are wearing mm. that for a different reason. I often find as well, in the same vein as the, as the bikini thing, you know, when you see things that you're used to, to celebrities or models or, or whatever, uh, used to a, seeing a certain look on them, sometimes if you try it yourself, it, it doesn't work. I tried the smoky eye thing, for example, years <laughs> ago this was. And I remember Cheryl Cole on The X Factor, it's when she was one of the judges. Really, really dark, dark eyes, like under the eyes, um, above the eyes, all the eyes, like really, really black. And I thought she, as she obviously always does, looked absolutely stunning. So I thought, right, I'm going to try the smoky eye look. And people like, Hannah, someone punched you in the face. <laughs> I mean, it just looked like I had two black eyes, like a panda or something. I mean, it just didn't work at all. And I thought, what, what am I doing wrong? You know, I, I felt like I, I looked exactly like she looked, but I, I looked utterly ridiculous. Yes, and I just wonder with some of these things, yeah. you know, you're used to seeing these celebrities showing a lot of cleavage, but if you do it, it's like, oh God, put it away, what are you doing? <laughs> they should put a warning, don't try this at home. Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And those dresses that have no back and they come halfway down the bottom, they do not stay in place naturally. <laughs> Those have double-sided tape yes, somewhere. Yes. Think the so most when of you them, try yeah, to go out have, into, yeah. you know, on, even on the beach in something similar, yeah. it's not <laughs> going to work. The wind blows, yeah. it's all gone yeah. to... Yeah. Yeah, or yeah. going in the water, disaster. It's like a knitted co swimming costume. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't yeah. work at all. <laughs> Aside from the fact that the knitting weave moves and then things start popping out. And that's, yeah, that doesn't work either. Oh. OK. So we'll leave, we'll leave it for the red carpet. Stick to the hoodie. Yes. <laughs> um, we've had a couple of messages uh, message saying women ogle men too. 
I've done, never heard such a thing. <laughs> oh, don't <laughs> do they? Yeah, we do. You're right. Absolutely. Um, we have another comment. As a man, it is difficult conversing with a woman wearing a very low cut dress and trying to maintain eye contact so as not to offend or come across as a lech. <laughs> yes, absolutely. It's true. Mm. And then men get in trouble for looking, and it's like, well, you're shoving it in their face. Where do you expect them to look? It's true. It's difficult. I feel for men in that instance. That's absolutely right. If you're if you're putting it in the face what yeah. you, you know poor loves you don't can't know go, what to do they exactly, don't know what to do exactly but it's it's a it's a thing isn't it if, yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm with you I'm with you on that um, oh we better take the last ad break Hannah Murray TRE in the afternoon Good afternoon. Welcome to the last part of today's Women Talk. With me in the studio today, Nina Ulinampa, Teresa Gonzalez and Eileen Ordas. There is an article with the headline, She grew up rubbing shoulders with models like Kate Moss, but almost destroyed herself trying to be thin. Now, as she's set to be thrust on the world stage, how Mila beat the fat-shaming bullies to become the first plus-size Miss England. And I have to say, looking at a photograph her, she doesn't look plus-size at all. I mean, I think plus-size is like 12 or something she's a 14. ridiculous. Oh, she's a 14. Mm. But Which is average UK. I, yeah, I think it is, isn't it? Mm. Used to be 16. Is it 14 now? 14, well, 16, something like that. But yeah, um, oh, I mean, we're back into the whole subject of, of, of models plus size, you know, what, what we're used to seeing, what do we want to see, what do we expect to see, is there anything we're shocked by, you know, how do you kind of feel about models and women in the public eye and their sizes? Oh, I think it's wonderful that she's won. I mm. think it's absolutely fantastic. Mm. I think it's representing normal people. Yeah. And I think what we're faced with most of the time is artificial um, situations and models that are starved to death and and really awful situations. And it turns into mel- mental illnesses and people who are obsessed by body weight and all of that. Mm. I think if you can embrace who you are and what you are and you look after yourself, um, it should be enough. And I think having that confidence that she must have gained by winning that, I think it's wonderful for every woman out there. Yeah, that's the thing. People are are naturally a certain shape, aren't they? I mean, mm. we obviously we can all make a make a difference to our body shape by eating healthily and exercising and things like that. But at the same time, if every single person in the world eat really ate really healthily and exercised, they wouldn't all have the same body shape and look the same. That's just not realistic. So I think it's nice that there are people of different shapes and sizes who are, you know, represented and, and out there in the public eye and being called beautiful. Exactly, and it's just like for that for her, and it doesn't, we, we, we don't categorise like you have to be in a certain box that you're, everybody can be beautiful and it can shine your beauty in a different way and you shouldn't be, I think it's very healthy because there's a lot of little girls out there that are looking for, and if they are not in the certain shape or size or thin mm. or whatever, or they're looking at the, like, how they perceive themselves. So it's really healthy to have a healthy, like a, the healthy outlook, that the outlook of a, a model or Miss England or Miss Universe or whatever is normal mm. because not every, you know, we are all come from different sizes and different heights, etc. So it's really healthy. And mm. I think it's fantastic. I was reading that one and it was uh, really really nice and it's very positive that there's like you know you don't have to be skin and bone just yeah. to be beautiful there's beauty in everybody and, you do, and it should be embraced like and the other thing like you said Hannah there that people can eat healthy and they still look different yes because you know it doesn't mean that you know a certain person is a certain size that they actually are healthy mm. because they might be starving themselves yeah, to yeah. death and, or they're using substance whatever mm. but it doesn't you know mean that but it's really healthy to see that to break the, the barriers kind of in the yeah. thing that you don't have to be yeah. you know and uh, just it, it typifies the, the model that people have encouraged in the past of yeah. people being too thin mm. is typified with that headline that a size 14 lady is seen as plus size yeah exactly that that shows that that Thinking still exists mm. in in that newspaper. Whoever wrote that, uh, perhaps they are 
the creating I think in the model industry that's still a thing so yeah. I think maybe that's where it comes from in fashion that is considered a plus size model so I guess it's that's kind of what's depressing about it absolutely isn't it? absolutely bizarrely before I came on today I was quickly scrolling through my Instagram and I saw a really lovely post by uh, Af- Ashley James who uh, posted like a reel with lots of photographs of her uh, in the past through recent years where she says in this video that she was basically starving herself and was really unhappy um, and while she was po- posting pictures of herself in bikinis and mm. dresses loads of people were commenting oh you look gorgeous you look amazing and she was getting all these compliments from people because she supposedly looked good but she was absolutely miserable and she wasn't eating and she felt ill and she wasn't in a good place mentally and now she's um, put on a little bit of weight she's not remotely overweight she looks healthy mm. um, and she's sitting there and, and not kind of wearing much with a little bit of a roll on her tummy and you know she's more <clears throat> healthy normal looking and uh, she's kind of saying that you know she doesn't get as many compliments anymore but she's so happy and she just kind of says this you know that it's, it's so bad isn't it mm. that that we're so used to compliment as i'm saying we as a, as a generalization complimenting people online saying they look good when they've lost a load of weight or when they're looking a certain way as opposed to saying it when it's got nothing to do with weight and people just looking happy and yeah. oh i love that what a great photo of you yeah. and just celebrating happiness as mm. opposed to oh you've lost weight you look great which is also nice to say I but think it's you know what i mean to be happy um yes. but it's also important to be healthy yeah and so i think people have to look at that and i know in england certainly there was a statistic that came out recently of uh, diabetes and how high uh, overweight um, the percentage is now in England of people mm. and so all of that needs to be taken into account within moderation mm. and I think everybody has to understand as we're saying that everybody is different mm. and you have to embrace that and yeah. it's wonderful to do that mm. but within a healthy way I mm. think it's important. How boring would it be if we all looked the same? <laughs> yes. Honestly, how that's boring what young girls are trying to do at the moment. Moment, you know, it? and it's like, like makeup, lips. hair, lips. Yeah, yeah. like it, so it's sorry. you know, or changing your appearance, like in, to look this picture like perfect. Yeah, mm. yeah. Mm. how boring would it be? Like what? Like we all we should be just embrace to being ourselves then, yeah. because that's where and have it like sounds so simple doesn't it yeah it does it does yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we've got a minute left so uh, I won't move on to another article so if we if, if, if there's a takeaway from today it's uh, embracing our natural beauty yes yes that's what we can do yes and compliment others on their natural beauty Yes, we'll do that. We'll spend the whole weekend doing that. (laughs) We'll stick at it, not just for the weekend. Uh, Thank you, ladies, very much for coming in today. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. Howard Brereton is next with Spain today, so uh, don't go away. And I will be back on Monday at four o'clock. It's funny because the last two weeks i did the friday show was covering on the friday show but i'm not tomorrow so i'm back to my weekend now so have a have a nice weekend and i will be back with you on monday at four you've been listening to a tre production if you've enjoyed this program there'll be another episode waiting for you next week right here on this platform where you can also access our extensive back catalog of shows and interviews For more information on our live programming, social media channels and apps and how to contact Talk Radio Europe, please visit tre.radio.